my final question before I let you let you go. Here we are right now. Mm -hmm. George Floyd was murdered. Right. In front of everyone's eyes. Right. Along with a few other black men murdered shortly afterwards. Yep. The, the protests, the biggest the world has ever seen, all 50 states, plus I think 20 or so other countries. Yeah. You know, when you guys were, you know, at your height, the, the backdrop was the Rodney King riots. Mm. And which was which was huge for that day. But this is amplified. You know, there isn't just one one tape, one grainy tape that's being circulated on mm -hmm. a couple of news stations. Every single person gets to see it all over the world in almost real time. These these riots and protests are still happening. Hundreds of thousands of people, coronavirus or not, people are still going out there and yeah. changing. Um, you know, in D.C., Black Lives Matter became right. a street and a plaza. In front of the, the wasn't president. that amazing? That was. I've never seen anything like yeah, that. Yeah, shout out to uh, Muriel Bowser, who I interviewed oh not too goodness. long ago, who really pulled that a, was pulled something out of her hat with that one. I never seen anything. And like then, that and then that life. started. Uh, I think it happened in New York and a bunch of other cities. Right. Juneteenth is yep. now today, <laughs> right? Which is today, you know. Right. That you see uh, later on is now becoming a state holiday, mm -hmm. potentially a federal holiday. Um, you you feel like some things are changing. I don't know what's the future, you know, what the future holds, but but you're seeing somewhat of a revolution happen worldwide. As someone who, you know, whose songs still resonate to this day, like mm -hmm. I said, Fight the Power to me is the greatest protest song ever. And it's still, you listen to it, you know, I listened, you know, I played it for someone for the first time, you know, mm -hmm. showed the video, like mm -hmm. the, that video in Brooklyn that they Spike Lee did with you guys, and you see that energy, and you see what you guys have been saying all along, is once again happening. How do you, as Chuck D of Public Enemy, feel about it? Well, you you have to recognize your stage and age. I am, you know, getting into the triple OG. So this moment is mind blowing, and it has help. You know, hip hop was that vehicle that we were able to get across to a lot of people and drop all those differences to get that message across. It had help. It had a movie. It was on a record. It had hip hop going for it. Today, young adults realize that, you know what? We're not gonna look at anything being a leader. It's like, you know, I made this comparison. In basketball, they have pos positionalist basketball. Well, this is what you call leaderless movement though. But the movement is forward with people looking at themselves. It's like, you know what? I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna be proactive. And that movement is the foot on the gas. That me in my stage and age, I can't, I, I don't have no governing leadership say so in this momentum, only to be a consigliere, mentor, advisor, there for counsel, telling young adults, yes, you have to be aggressive for the world that you're gonna have to be in or your children have to be in or see. And keep your foot on the gas because you take your foot off the gas, the systemic racism that exists that you totally don't vacuum it and extinguish, it's gonna pop up like crabgrass, man. So you gotta go into the root. And even if you go in the root and extract it, you just can't walk away from the lawn. These things, there's a human glitch. We can't explain what the human glitch is and how it comes from. You know, you know that sometimes you can look at the human glitch and say, damn, you got that thing in you that's just evil that you can't change. And I don't know where that came from. That's just the way some things are going to be. But you should be able to recognize it. And as individuals, collective effort makes the change but like you said when things are changing you have to maintain the change you just can't say we changed it because as you've seen even with some changes that have gone forward in a matter of four to six years it flips right back i mean it has to be voluntarily 
in order for it to be a voluntary motion that these things can't pop up and just happen again. And the thing that makes this the thing to always consider to work on is because older people that know disappear and move on, transition, and younger people come in that might not know the first steps to how they be acting. So you're asking questions like, listen, man, like I, t- I said in the beginning of the conversation, it's a ridiculous notion that older people don't tell younger people that they're the leaders at 20 and 30 and 40. There's been a game played on younger adults to kind of like victim or make them like seem like they're infantile. Like you don't worry about getting the house, even if you got kids, until you're 50 years old. And I just think that's been derogatory. For for look, I believed in what Bernie Sanders was saying. Do I believe that he should have been a president at seventy nine years old? Give me a fucking break, man. Seventy nine Bernie Sanders, seventy seven or seventy eight Joe Biden, and Donald Trump at seventy five. If I'm twenty years coming in here, I'm saying they ain't fucking, they lying to me about a goddamn future. Older generations are supposed to usher young energy into leadership, not desperation. And this movement by young people in the streets, when when that officer, Chauvin, had that, that leg and that knee on that brother's neck, killing him slowly, I bet you he had no idea that the world would respond. I think he's probably saying, you know what, whatever, I don't, I don't, I mean, people say they don't give a of course, I know that was probably ringing. Probably think the worst thing come out of it is like maybe what happened like the to the not too long long ago in that area. Remember that? Remember that area, the Minnesota area. What happened? Brother's name. Um. Um. Uh, it just escaped. The name escapes me. But it was, it was only in the same St. Paul area. Um. Uh, he had the French name. Um. Uh, yeah, it's just escaping me for this moment. In Minnesota, Castile, Philando Castile. Philando Castile, yeah. That was only in the area like four years earlier, bro. So you probably say, you know, it'd be a little race tension, a race war, and I'm down for the race war, or whatever, which is the stupid thing to imagine. But he never expected that the whole world would be like, and nobody could see that coming, that would say something about this. And not to say, you know, like, and, and the skeptics would say, yeah, but you know, it's temporary and in and a pop thing or whatever. Well, maybe so the conditions help create that. You lock people up in the house, don't give them clear answers, you know, from the top, like what the pandemic really is, because there was conflicting reports about what it is that people still don't know today. Mm -hmm. So you take a younger generation of 30 and under, 40 and under, and confuse them like that, you keep them contained, you don't give clear answers, and then you have some like that coming out. You take their activities away, their beaches, their hangout places, sports, music, everything, and at the same time, y'all stay in the house, and um, oh yeah, by the way, racism is still gonna be kicking ass. <laughs> it's like, boom! Yeah. And what makes it different is that young people also are looking and say, you know what, man? I'm not in the Trump conversation. Maybe the older people do that. Y'all figure that out. Chuck D, make it be your battle because you got beef from going back then. That's, you know, OG battle. Mm-hmm. But we going to figure out in our town how they're going to listen to us. Reform police and figure it out, whatever that is. Because, you know, the police in the United States of America, the fraternal order of police, gang mentality. It's like, do you, con- con- you know, the, their problem is they kind of call the person that's saving a cat in a county tree the same police cop that's up there in Baltimore trying to figure out some crime issue in their head. They ain't the same people, but they still had the same code. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it need to be a standard, but at the same time, man, you got to start looking at counties. Counties in the United States of, of America have always been on this fiefdom shit anyway. You go from one county to the next county and one county and a judge and all these people that get voted in you know, kind of like, you know, they kind of get voted in by default and end up being a judge for like 35 years and nobody knows, especially not young people. And that's the same dude looking at them when they get arraigned. They say, you know what? We do this in this county. You might have been in that county, 
But in this county, this is how it goes. And so with all these counties feeling like little plantations and they got their own forces, that attitude is prevalent, man. And if they see something that happens in Minneapolis, then they all going to what? They all gang up together and say, OK, yeah, but we're going to actually make sure that that attitude don't permeate. With that type of what they call back in the day, cracker attitude in government, old, young, middle aged, you know, babies and all feel that animosity. So I'm not an economist. I'm not a reform. I don't know what it would take, but that's what people are asking for when they start talking things like defund police. And I don't know what they're talking about. You know, you need policing, but you need policing in the dealing of people instead of policing, meaning protect and serve property or property owners and handling people like animals. That should be reformed. And I think young people have gotten enough of narratives coming from all over the place. They're able to say, yeah, I don't, I feel that. I don't want it to happen to me. And even if it don't happen to me, that's just fucked up to be that way. And they're connected. And that's the thing about it, Vlad. They're connected. Once upon a time, you had to take your ass home to a TV or maybe a laptop to check out Vlad. Mm -hmm. Now they're on a bus or in their car and all Vlad pops up when you actually light up and they're going to light it up and they're going to be connected. So we have to also expect new games will be played. And it's not this thing like, Joe Chunk D, you're prophetic, man, because you saw the internet coming and all that. No, I was able to see a lean and tree. New games will be played, meaning that when the grid goes down, or if the grid goes down, or all these systems that people place the shit on social media, as being the extension of their lives that are really one hack away, what do you do then? Prepare yourself, save your shit on hard drives, come up with ways that you still communicate with circles and people and able to travel without the dependency on systems running on the grid. New games will be played. And there's some of the fear also coming into, you know, the rest of this summer and going into, quote unquote, November 2020. Games will be played. Even when situations realize they're in areas of desperation, games will be played. And the, and, the, and the seriousness that throws fear in the people is the dirty games that will be played based out of animosity, the, the cocktail of hatred and fear. And that is something that will take everybody to try to clear it. And the young people are making a movement to that. And um, I also say this, that privilege and arrogance go hand in hand. Even if I, I boil it down to culture, when we first started out, there was an arrogance <laughs> and ego, usually out of necessity because you're crammed, you're packed. And so you want to have this chest out type of attitude. And New Yorkers always had it. I got parents from Harlem, man. You know, both of them born in the same block. New York, everybody else is country bumpkins. <laughs> that we saw, that's what I said, me and Daddy O on our first tours, we helped diffuse that. People was in awe of you from New York. But we said, you know, if you keep being disrespectful to their existence, that all gonna go away. You're gonna come home in a box. Yeah. And some of that happens. Yeah, Willie D's big on that. Right, exactly. And you asked Willie D who's the brother that embraced him first. Yeah. Me and Daddy O. Come on, D. We fam. We brothers. Man. Yeah, no, he mentioned the run DMC line that, you know, go down south and shut your mouth. Like he, you know, the South felt disrespected by New York. Public enemy was a, and 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 Daddy O for saying, I always say Daddy O, because Daddy O's the code Grio when we came in. It's kind of like the same time. Although Daddy O had a couple years on me. We went to these places we embraced, especially black brothers, man. We come on, man. We, come on, really. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying is that, and you notice a little bit, Vlad, with parents from Russia or whatever, you, there's, a, there's a United States of American arrogance everywhere else. Yeah, because I'm an American, my family's Russian. There's always been a very sharp divide between me and my parents and also my relatives. Like, I was not that. Even my cousins who were older than me, I was four years old. Uh -huh. I'm American. Right. 
That's all I really know. Right. I don't know the old country. I don't know that. It, it, it's always been a divide. It's always been a reason why I was never really all that close to right. my family. And yeah, man, I mean, but I'm, then, I'm here for what's happening right now. the rest of the world looks at this place as spoiled and brats. Yeah. When you're going overseas, I'm like, over oh, well, what sea? You mean the Atlantic or the Pacific? Oh, you down there. Oh, yeah, that started the virus over there. Yeah, the Chinese virus. United States yeah. starts off with all this dialogue about everywhere else in the world, how the world going to change ain't been nowhere. How the <laughs> f*** you going to tell me about the world? You ain't been outside your state, bro. I'm just saying, you get means everything being fed to you is giving you this arrogant USA attitude at the rest of the world. Humble yourself to the planet. Listen to what the rest of the planet got to say. It will put the United States of America in a better place, at least mentally, spiritually, and you go from there. I know that as a person who's been traveling the world 116 countries for 33 years, and especially in the last four years, knowing that they think it's our motherfucking choice to pick Donald Trump, and you got a guy who the world fucking despises, and half the country despises, and then people say, how the fuck is he there? That's yeah. why I say the bottom line to State of the Union, shut the fuck up, sorry ass motherfucker, stay away from me, is dude. Just leave. You got to get Nixonized, man, before we do hate your ass. We just kind of like, you know, if we say we don't hate you, we asking the question, how the f*** are you a president? Yeah. Because America wants, United States, no, no, I don't say America because it's North, South, Central America. Right. Those got to get included. United States of America wants its beauty pageant and celebrity show. And the reality show got to stop here when it comes down to you and your needs. And that's what these movements are. Like a, a celebrity, a person showing off their fucking money. How the fuck they going to show off what they got? And I'm trying to fucking keep my goddamn room. How the fuck I'm going to see some TV, but at, on my way to my little piece of fucking job, I'm driving by tents on Skid Row. That's is what young people or young adults are saying. And they're like, man, f that bullshit. And I know that just from young people who's in my family. That man, you mean what? Damn. How I'm going to get that fucking house? Yeah. yeah. So that's I'm... that movement right now. And that movement is resonating with the rest of the world to say, you know, we feel you. So stop being all this wave, flag waving and say, join the rest of the world on how we can make it better and a place for everybody. I agree. I agree. Chuck D, it's been 10 years we've been talking Ten about years. doing so it. So 2030, when I'm 70, right? Yeah. We, we... We're going to do another one. We're going to do a part two. <laughs> Chuck, man, I wish you all the best. You and your I gotta, entire... I'm going to give you the toe dap, you know, boom. You yeah, know, exactly. No elbows, you know, no and, and you actually gave me a, a book. Yes, sir. Let me let me go ahead and give it to you so you can show it on camera. Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote this to inform people of the myths, and it's basically simple. I kept seeing all the all the uh, rock and roll history and rock and roll facts. You talk to a rockhead, you know how it is, but that mm -hmm. the motherfuckers know. Oh yeah, the baseball the bass player and Leonard Skinner. There's not that you know <laughs> and. It, once upon a time, you had cats in hip hop that would identify even the engineers on cuts. Oh, yeah. And then you got great books out there. So I think um, what I would like to do, my man Jahi and I, who's an educator in the Bay Area as well as a co rhyme on Enemy Radio, is do like the, the Oprah Book Club for, for MCs and rappers because there's plenty of great books out there. I just don't think they, they kind of they kind of sit in a place where they get curated. So that's a good thing. So I put out, there you go. I put out quite a few books in my life. And um, I don't try to talk about socioeconomic politics and all that. I keep it, I keep it, I keep it hip hop, man. Talk about some good things that I know. And I'm very quick to tell people when they ask me a question, I'm like, I don't know that. Shit. Right? <laughs> and that, and that's, that's all right to tell people what you are not and what you don't know. It's all right to do that. So here you go, Vlad. This there you me. go. Thank you so much. And you know what? This book is this thick and they had to get edited down because if a book about rap music and hip hop really should be about this thick, but we can't do that. 
Not yep. in the physical, maybe digital. Yep. Thank you, bro. All right, that's what it is, Chuck, man. Truly appreciate it. Truly honored by your presence. Yeah, 10 and years, bro. 10 years, every 10, 10 years. years. Every 10 years, we'll do people, another one. A lot of people are afraid of the ballad. <laughs> they want to, you know, if there's low hanging fruit, you're going to knock a few of the low hanging fruit down, but I don't talk about the drama. So, but by me not talking about the drama and the bullshit, it allows people to feel that they could talk about the drama and the bullshit. There you and go. Because you know, a lot of people, that's, that's their thing. So, yep. you go swim in the drama and the bullshit swamp with them. And, <laughs> Keep it high post with me. So there we uh, go. But big up to Jay, Jalen Rose, mm -hmm. uh, you John know, Sally. It's then Sal, of course, and, and Jalen is the dude that, that keeps it high post with that generation on TV. And yep. And uh, and uh, yeah, that's I'm representing the hip hop side of, of of things. Big up to my man Willie D out there, and so yep. many other the crew, and and we move on, man. That's what it is. Peace. Yeah. Peace.